Hi, Brent Tech here, where tech is made simple. So late last week on Friday, Microsoft rolled out our latest optional bug fix C release update for Windows 11 24H2. And the update is KB5064081. And the update is optional, so you don't have to install it. And if you don't install it now, those fixes and improvements, most of them will be carried over into the next Patch Tuesday security update, as you may well know. Now, once the update has been applied, and as you can see, the OS build will be bumped up to 26100.5074. Now, this is quite a big update, so I'm just going to dive straight in because there's quite a lot going on. Now, with this update, we get 18 new features. And the new features and fixes I'm going to mention now are all rolling out gradually. So you may or may not see them. Most of them I have not received. So these are on a gradual rollout, which is quite common. So first of all, just mentioning the first two because they are for Copilot Plus PCs. And I have posted on most of these new features in separate videos. So you can do a search accordingly on the channel if you'd like some more info. Now, first of all, Recall on Copilot Plus PCs opens now to a personalized homepage that puts your recent activity and top used apps and websites, Microsoft says, front and center, which makes it easy to pick up where you left off. After turning on snapshot collection, the homepage highlights key productivity features like recent snapshots, which show the latest snapshots to help you quickly resume tasks and top apps and websites, which display the three apps and websites you've used most in the past 24 hours, according to Microsoft. And then the next new feature is also for Copilot Plus PCs. And when you launch Click To Do for the first time, you'll see a quick interactive tutorial, which Microsoft says shows how to complete tasks faster by demonstrating actions on both text and images, such as summarizing large blocks of text or removing image backgrounds. So those are rolling out for Copilot Plus PCs. Now, the next new feature is that when an app requests access to location, camera, microphone, or other device capabilities, Windows now shows a redesigned system dialog box. To emphasize the privacy prompt, the screen dims slightly and the prompt appears at the center of the screen, where previously that was not the case, as you can see. And then the next new feature is for the taskbar, where there is now a larger clock with seconds. I'm not seeing this yet. That's why I'm just showing you an image, which is now back in the notification center. Displayed above the date and calendar. And to turn this option on, you would go to settings, time and language, date and time, and turn on Show time in notification center. As mentioned, I'm not seeing that yet because these features are rolling out gradually. And then just to mention a fix quickly, if you accidentally click and drag your mouse across the taskbar preview thumbnail and thumbnails, the preview might stop working. So that's a niggly issue that's been sorted out. And then we get two new features for search on the taskbar. Microsoft says the first is that when you search from the Windows taskbar, a new grid view will help you more quickly and accurately identify the desired image within your search. And the next new feature I'm just going to mention, Microsoft says search on the taskbar now provides clearer status information. So if you search, so if your search results are incomplete while your PC is organizing files in the background, Windows shows a notice with a link to check progress and you can dismiss the notice when you're done. There's also a status for files and folders so you can easily tell whether they are available online or stored on your device. So two new features rolling out for the Windows search on the taskbar. And then the lock screen gets a new feature, which I'm just going to mention. Widget options and support for lock screen widget personalization are rolling out. So after initial launch with Windows Insiders in the EEA, these updates are expanding to all regions. Microsoft says you can add, remove, and rearrange lock screen widgets such as weather, watch list, sports, traffic, and more. 
and you would just do that on the settings personalization lock screen page and i think that's a nice move in the right direction where currently in my region it's all or nothing if you choose weather you get the full package so i like that giving us a couple of extra options and then for file explorer there are two new features and microsoft says that dividers now separate top level icons in the file explorer context menu now i haven't received this but just to give you a general idea when you right click you'll see a divider now between cut copy rename share delete and so on a little white line and microsoft says for file explorer and Microsoft says the next new feature is that when you're signed in with a work or school account using an Enter ID, File Explorer will display people icons in the activity column and the recommended section at the top of File Explorer Home. And then there is a fix for File Explorer that if you try to use the unblock open in properties for a file, it still shows as blocked when you open properties the next time. So that's been fixed. And then Windows Hello has received two new features a fix and an improvement now just to mention the two new features because i have posted on these in separate videos as part of the enhanced passkey features released in september 2023 microsoft says you'll see a redesigned windows hello interface with microsoft saying that these modern visual updates support fast clear communication that appear across multiple authentication flows including the windows sign in screen passkey recall and microsoft store and more and the next new feature, Microsoft says, the Windows security credential experience for Passkey offers a cleaner, more intuitive interface designed to support fast, secure sign-in. So you can now easily switch, Microsoft says, between authentication options such as Passkeys or connected devices. And then the fix is that Windows alone might recognize your face on the logging screen. However, it would still fail and then prompt you to enter your PIN. So that's also quite an important fix. And then there's an improvement where fingerprint login after standby is now more robust according to Microsoft. And then for settings, we get three new features and a fix. I'm just going to mention the first. Windows activation and expiration prompts match the Windows 11 design and appear as system notifications when action is required. And then the next is Microsoft says you can head over now to settings, privacy and security. And head right down to the bottom of the page, text and image generation. And Microsoft says on this page, you will now see which third-party apps have recently used generative AI models provided by Windows. And you can also choose which apps are permitted to use them. And I think that's going to be more for Copilot Plus PCs as well. And then while we are talking about Copilot Plus PCs, Microsoft says that as part of... The Copilot Plus PC experience, the agent in settings, that's the AI agent in settings, which helps you find and change settings, initially available on Snapdragon powered Copilot Plus PCs, is now available and supports AMD and Intel powered Copilot Plus PCs. And then the fix for settings is Microsoft says that it might crash if you attempt to add a security key under settings account sign in options. So that's an important fix. And then the task manager, Microsoft says that the task manager now uses standard metrics to show CPU workload consistently across all pages, aligning with industry standards and third-party tools, which previously was not the case. And I think that's a nice move. And then widgets gets two new features, both of which I have not received. So I'm just going to mention these. The first new feature is there are now multiple dashboards, which are available in the widgets board. I've posted on these in previous videos, by the way. And then the next new feature is, is a Discover feed on the widgets board. With Microsoft saying the layout is now more organized and personalized. And you also get Copilot curated stories, which are also now included. So Copilot has made its way to the widgets board as well. And I've posted on those in previous videos. And then... There's a new feature for Windows Backup for Organizations, which has already rolled out to home users as part of the backup app, which is transferred to a new PC. And that's now generally available as Windows Backup for Organizations. 
So basically what this is all about, your information will be transferred to another PC over the local network. So it's ready when you need it. And that's a tool for moving between PCs and setting up new PCs. Now that's available now for businesses, businesses and enterprises. And then here's a one that I'm quite happy to see. PowerShell 2 is no longer included in Windows. So if we just head over quickly to our control panel, head over to Programs and Features, and turn Windows Features on and off. PowerShell, which was located somewhere in this area, as part of the legacy aspect of the OS, is now no longer included. That's PowerShell 2.0. This legacy component was introduced in Windows 7 and officially deprecated in 2017. And it was also a bit of a security risk. So I'm quite happy to see that's been removed. I have posted on that previously. And most users won't be affected, Microsoft says, as newer versions such as version 5.1 and 7 remain available and supported for download. So I'm quite happy to see that PowerShell version 2.0 has been removed now. And just to mention a couple of fixes which are rolling out gradually. And there's a fix for live captions where changing the opacity of live captions had no effect. And there are two input fixes where trying to type Chinese with an IME after copying something with Control and C can result in the first character not displaying. That's been fixed. And there was an underlying issue related to text input framework.dll which could result in certain apps like sticky notes and notepad crashing. That's also been fixed, and that's an important one as well. And there's also a fix that was causing explorer.exe to crash, which is the shell of your computer, like your start menu, taskbar, file explorer, and so on. So that's an important fix. And there's an improvement for login, which has addressed some underlying cases, which could lead to you seeing a blank white screen or a screen saying just a moment for a few minutes when logging into your PC. And there was an issue where on certain devices, audio would initially play, but stop a few seconds after casting to a TV. That's a mirror cast fix. And there's an improvement for audio where Microsoft has addressed an underlying audio service that stopped responding, which could impact the ability to play audio in certain cases. And here's an important fix, which actually addresses a known issue. The update addresses an issue where you might see an error in Windows Event Viewer with error RD57. The event displays the following message. The Microsoft Pluton cryptographic provider was not loaded because initialization failed. And I also posted on that, and that now is good to see that's finally been fixed. And guys, that's all the new features and fixes rolling out gradually. Now, just to mention two fixes that are rolling out on a normal rollout, because there are one or two others taking place under the hood. Microsoft says it's fixed an issue in the Resilient File System, REF, where using backup apps with large files could sometimes exhaust system memory. And there's also a performance fix where the update addresses an issue that shows application installation on ARM64 devices. Some installers might take longer to complete. And if you are running a Copilot Plus PC, this release updates the following AI components, image search, content extraction, semantic analysis, and the settings model. So guys, quite a lot going on in this update. And I'm sure by now, if you were using your computer over the weekend, you would have received this update, KB5064081. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.